Number five is the communication system. So you've got seven systems. They all have to be able to communicate. And how do they communicate? By hormones, you've got 50 of them. In our course, we teach you how to make the eight most important ones work correctly. <clears throat> Nerves, you've got 100 billion neurons and neurotransmitters. You got a hundred of those, but a few of them do almost all the work. We'll mention a couple of them. Jody came in to this class, food craving. All right, that fits in the communication system. Poor diet, no energy, stressed, obese, and could not lose weight. She went to her doctor. Her doctor said, you're obese, lose weight. <clears throat> she can't lose weight. A lot of people have that problem. And when you have difficulty losing weight, I always think of the communication system. And I'll show you why in a minute. But let's review what the neurotransmitters are. <clears throat> Anyone think of a neurotransmitter? The sleep one. What's the sleep neurotransmitter? Melatonin. And uh, <clears throat> you've got serotonin and dopamine and GABA. Where does your body make these? Now, we used to think they're made in your brain, because that's where they're used mostly. We now know they're made in your gut. And guess what produces them? Your gut bacteria. Oh, we keep going back to the gut and how important it is. Involved in producing all three of these key neurotransmitters. Now there are different ways to boost your neurotransmitters and make you feel good. You can boost them by taking opioids. <clears throat> They do make you feel better. And 64,000 people died last year because of that addiction. You don't want to do that. You can also boost them with heroin. Well, you don't want to do that. And sugar. You know sugar works in the same pathways as heroin? Here's a study. Excessive amounts of sugar can lead to increased amounts of dopamine. All right, you feel better. Same as with heroin. High sugar foods cause people to binge eat because they give you that boost in feeling, very temporarily, unfortunately, and they also inhibit the receptors that make you have self-control. So you get a buzz and a last lack of self loss of control, and each time we do, it takes a little more and more and more, and it's a vicious addictive cycle. We know that addictive behaviors hijack the brain. Normal brain, cocaine brain, obese, sugar addict brain, it screws up your brain. Now this is reversible. <clears throat> Nerves, extremely important. If you've had nerve problems, you know how important they are. Where do most nerve problems occur? In the spine. It's the most easy area for nerves to have pressure or impingement. They did a study looking at nerves and adjustments and they wanted to see what one chiropractic adjustment did. So they imaged the brain and then they imaged it after one adjustment. Amazing things happened. They showed that chiropractic adjustments reduced emotional stress, reduced physical stress, decreased muscle tightness, and decreased pain intensity. <clears throat> and the last part of this system is the hormones. I'm going to just mention one because this is one you need to know about and that is insulin. Now when I ask people have you ever had your fasting insulin checked almost everybody says what are you talking about? It's not blood sugar, it's not A1C, it is insulin. In this 11-year uh, study following 208 healthy people, they found that if you have high insulin levels, you have a lot higher risk at all five of the main killers. In that same study, they found that low levels of insulin, no disease. I'm giving you guys an easy control for all five of the main killers. Keep your insulin down. Now, Jody, who we mentioned earlier, had high insulin and high cortisol. This is the fat storage hormone. You don't want that to be high. This is the stress hormone. You don't want that to be high. 
It's easy to check your insulin. This is a simple blood test and I do hundreds of these every year. Jody's insulin was 17. Now it should never be above five. I checked a lady this morning. Hers was 38. You think it's easy to lose weight when your insulin's 38? It's not, and I'll show you why. Right now, I'm gonna give you a simple test. You can check your insulin, make a C out of your hand. Flip that C over and pinch right here. <laughs> insulin makes you gain weight right in the middle. <clears throat> that's called the pinch test, and yes, it is really a test. Now let me show you why that's a problem for weight. Insulin and weight loss. The release of fatty acids or fat from fat cells is inhibited by insulin. You've got high insulin, it blocks your fat cells from releasing fat. So here's a fat cell, here's insulin, it came and bound to the fat cell, and then it blocks the fat getting out. So what's the key to making this problem go away? Gotta lower insulin. And the Seven Systems Plan is the perfect way to lower insulin quickly. And when you do that, fat starts flowing out of those cells. My highest patient ever had a fasting insulin of 73, and we were able to get it down. Jody's insulin, 17 when we started, and five when we ended. Do you think she's enjoying life more? She went from falling asleep as a school teacher when she got home from school grading papers to taking kickboxing after school. Communication system fixed.